Yeah. All right. Now we turn to Arizona, where Cochise County delayed the certification of November's midterm elections by a vote of two to one. The Cochise County Board of Supervisors pushed back certification at least until Friday, citing concerns, they say, about voting machines. In the lawsuit filed by the Office of Arizona Secretary of State Katie Hobbs, however, a Democrat who will be the state's next governor, officials say failing to certify the election results violate state law and can potentially disenfranchise the county's voters. Here with his thoughts on Arizona, distinguished professor at Touro University, Thane Rosenbaum. Thane, always great to see you. Thanks for being with us. Always a pleasure, Kat, and oh. you too, Bob. <laughs> All right. Now, Mike, our, our question, I mean, we, we've been debating this. Is it illegal to not certify an election? Is that true? So, you know, we're having a problem in our country. The good news, it's confined to just one or two states, which is that there's a concern about election integrity. That's one tension. And then we also want a peaceful transfer of power. And that's really what we're experiencing these last four years. Uh, technically, the County Board of Supervisors uh, have an obligation to approve or tally the official vote count and certify the election. Why is this a problem? Because under even Arizona law, if they don't do it and they miss a deadline or ignore the deadline, all of those votes don't get tabulated in the, in the state's total. So you can see how that can absolutely change an election, and that's what the lawsuits are about, is to compel the supervisors to ultimately tally the election. Tally is another word for essentially counting the votes. Yeah. Remember, counting the votes, remember that's what happened in January 6th. This is all very familiar where you're having a problem with actual counting the votes, and that's what we're seeing here. Yeah, and what's interesting is, um, you know, you could say, the reason it matters, because in this case, I believe the county voted uh, Republican for Kerry Lake primarily, and so they would then not be counting votes that would help Carrie Lake, whom they would favor. Um, but the, the, besides the issue of, uh, the, of three people shouldn't be able to decide whether your vote and my vote and her vote, whether they count, um, it, it is interesting that if you uh, played it out a different way, Let's say you went across the country and, and a county voted Republican, but you're a Democrat and you're in charge and you're going to vote against certifying your own votes because you don't agree with that. So it, it, unintended consequences, right? Bob, look, you know, what people are forgetting, there were always questions about elections, right? Even right. in the old days, right? There was always questions. Yeah, Cook County, uh, Illinois was one. Of course, and right, and we saw not just questions, sometimes we saw outright fraud. But the difference was that there was often, most cases, the accepting of election outcomes, begrudgingly, but accepting. And what we're seeing now is the non-acceptance. People are saying, and by the way, part of the problem is that the questions are now more real because of, partly because of technology, right? Uh, these are new, relatively new machines. In the old days, you, you push a lever, and that's your vote. Now you need ink. You need computer tabulations, right? You got a good video there of what it looks like. These things are all being done by computer. There's now allegations. If it's a computer, guess what people claim? Hacking, right? You couldn't hack into the old machines because it was done manually, right? What else? Early mail, early voting. This is new. This is something that came a post-pandemic yeah. Uh, feature. Right. Uh, early voting always raises questions because the votes sit around there and they get stale and they can be tampered with. Mail-in voting, it used to be that mail-in absentee voting was the extreme exception. Unless you were in London during the election or you were serving overseas in the military, you show up and stand in line like everyone else. Well, we changed all of that. And unfortunately, a lot of these changes introduced more uncertainty. Yeah. That combined with Donald Trump's arguments on a stolen election mm -hmm. essentially normalized this idea yeah. that if I don't think the vote is correct, I should bring a lawsuit to stop the counting. Yeah, and just so people know, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't interpret this as being allegations of fraud going on in Arizona at this point. We haven't seen that, uh, even though an unfairness in the process of how it unfolded uh, a lot of people feel that the fact that those tabulation machines had broken down, that was unfair. And, and quickly, it's very important to remember, in the lawsuits that were brought in, in, in connection with our last presidential election, 
the judges dismiss those cases because there's this term of art that we should pay attention to. Not fraud, widespread fraud. Those are the words Fair that enough. are, yeah. right, widespread fraud. If right. you don't see widespread fraud, there's no reason to overturn the election. And that's yeah. the key word. Okay. Thane Rosenbaum, thank you, sir. Anytime.